Hey guys, and welcome back to another programming uh, problem and solution video. So in this video, we're going to be going into probably, a, I would rec say, a medium level program or a problem. Uh, so if you're a beginner, feel free to listen to the problem and see if you have any idea how you would solve it. But I will note that it is a little bit more advanced. It's not a crazy difficult solution, but just to understand the problem and the process to go through to do it is, you know, a little bit more complicated than obviously what we did in the last video, which was just very basic um, programming problems. So with that being said, let's get started. Uh, so actually quickly, sorry, before we get started, all this stuff is going to be up on my website. So like the actual problem and then the code and the solution. So if you just click the link in the description, it should bring you to the website. I don't know if I'm going to do this for all of them, but for ones where I have like longer solutions, uh, and the problem, something like this, like not on a different website, uh, I'll just put it on my website. So you guys can go on there and look at it. Okay, so essentially, uh, you guys can read through this problem if you want. I mean, feel free to pause the video and attempt it. It's not super difficult. But what we need to do is given some input like this, where the first uh, line or the first input actually stands for the amount of uh, inputs we're about to get. So like we'll get four, and that stands for how many lines is about to come. So we know how to grab those. We have to decompress this into kind of like an encoded form. And the way we're going to do that, or at least the problem outlines that we should do that, is we should look for a series of consecutive characters. And then instead of writing those characters, like doing like three plus signs, we're going to do the number three and then the character. So you can see down here, we get three and then plus sign. So it stands for there's, there was three plus signs and then we get three and then equal signs. Cause there was three equal signs and then we get four and then exclamation points. So four exclamation points. So essentially you get an integer character, integer character, integer character. And obviously for strings like this, where there might only be, um, there might be no consecutive characters. You're still going to get one, three, one period. One, like, so it stands for one, 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 four, one, one, four, five. Now I would actually challenge you guys. If you come up with the solution to try to do it the other way around. So given this, like this sequence, turn it into this. So if you guys think this is too easy, do this, take this sequence and turn it into this sequence. Okay. So take your output and like do the inverse essentially of this. Okay, so that's the problem. And I want you guys to think about how you would go about solving this. And then I'm going to bring up my solution now and I'll go through how I solved it and just prove to you that it's working. So uh, my solution I did in two ways. Uh, the first way is so the input, right? Actually, let me bring up this tab again, uh, make it a bit smaller. The inputs this and the way it wants you to read the input in is like using literally input. Um, so it says like, you're going to use input. You're going to say how many lines are coming and then you're going to loop through that many lines, get the input stored in a list and then essentially solve that problem for each of the different inputs, right? And then give some kind of output. Uh, for me, I'm just put all my input into a text file just so I, when I, uh, what do you call it? Keep testing this. I don't have to, uh, keep like typing in the input again. I recommend you guys do that as well. So if I go to Python, YouTube programming problems, you can see the input that they had there. I just put in a text file so that I can just read it in um, constantly when I run the program rather than having to type it in. But I mean, you guys could type it in as well and I'll show you how each of them works. We'll leave that open too. So I'm going to open this text file, right? Which was right here. We're going to read in all of these lines. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I actually need to change this one second uh, like that. I'm going to say four line in lines. So essentially for each line, so each line of input, uh, we're going to solve the problem, right? Cause we're gonna have to solve the problem all four times. Now, since I'm reading it in from a text file, I just have to remove this backslash n character because you can't actually see it. But when you write a text file like this at the end of each line, there's a little backslash n that stands for go to the next line. But when you read that into Python, you'll see that. So you got to get rid of it. Um, okay. So we get rid of backslash n. And then what I'm doing is I'm defining three variables that I'm going to use essentially to we'll solve the problem here. And these are going to reset every time we do a new line and solve like the problem again. Right? So I'm saying new string, which is going to be essentially my output. Uh, I'm saying last, which is just the first character in the string. And I'm saying count equals one. And essentially the principle behind my solution is what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of the last character in the string. I'm going to see if the current character I'm looping through is equal to that. If it is, I'm going to add one to the count. So we're going to say we've seen two plus signs. And then as soon as I reach a character where it's different from the last character, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the previous character. I'm going to add, sorry, the amount. So like whatever my count variable was at, plus the previous character to that string that's going to be our output. And then I'm going to reset the count and reset the last character to be like, uh, to be one and then whatever the next character is. 
And then we're going to continue that process until eventually we get to a point where there's no more consecutive, uh, what do you call it, characters at all. And we're done looping through the string. So I'll show you the solutions working and then I'll draw out exactly how it works. So you guys get an idea and we'll go through like line by line what it does. So uh, let me run this and you can see we get three plus uh, three plus three. And then so like three pluses, three equals signs, four exclamation points, six sevens, six periods, 12 T's one bracket to a right so you can see and that obviously lines up with uh with this as well and you can see that i don't think i made any mistakes um in my solution and to give you guys an idea of how long this took me to make i programmed the solution in probably about like five minutes so i mean you guys can gauge how well or how good you're doing based on that i guess i don't know so anyways that uh is kind of the solution let's go through it line by line and then let's draw out a few examples and run through what the solution actually does for that so uh, what we're doing obviously is for every line and line we're going to set these variables I already talked about that and this is really where the magic happens in this for loop this is the main solution so i'm just going to do this so i can see it a bit easier um so essentially for every character in our line not including the first one and that's what it says in this comment here too now why do we not look at the first one well we've already looked at the first one here we've said we're getting the first character and we're going to say the count is one because well you're never going to have a count of zero because you're always going to have at least one character, right? Like you can't have zero pluses. Otherwise you wouldn't have a plus. So we say line zero count one, which means we're getting the first character and we're saying it's count is currently one. We've seen that character one time. Now what we do is we go in this for loop and we're going to loop through every character past past that first character. So we're going to loop from the second to the end. What we're going to do is we're going to say if the current character, so the second character in this case is equal to the first character, or you know the last character then we're going to add one to count which means we've seen essentially two consecutive uh characters so they're the same thing and then that's all we're going to do for that loop now in the instance where they're not the same so we see two different characters we're going to do exactly the process i talked about which is we're going to add to our output string which is new string here the count so the current count whatever it was because right now let's say we only seen this character once is not equal to the next character. Well, we're going to say, well, the current count was one. So we're going to put one. We're going to add a space because that's what the output requires. And then we're going to add the last character, which was, well, whatever that character was. So let's say it was an H. We're going to do one space H and then add another space, which is just going to be. So next time we do, we add to the string, it's like spaced out correctly. Then we're going to reset the count and we're going to say last is equal to the current character because it's not a consecutive character um, we need to change it because now we're looking to see if the if this is going to be consecutive and when i draw it out it'll be more clear then at the end here this line is really important because essentially uh when we get to the very end if we had a series of consecutive characters right so let's say we get to the very last thing and the last character in our string was equal to the previous one we're not going to add anything to the string we're simply just going to exit the loop because well we added one to count so we have to make sure that we add the last element, which is going to be whatever the count was and then whatever that sequence of character was, characters were to the string. And then for each of these lines, we're just going to print out the output and then it looks like it's stacking the output. Right. And this is actually fairly efficient because this runs in uh, what do you call it? Linear time because we're only doing one loop. So this actually run quite quickly or uh, yeah, well, it runs linear time for the solution, but obviously the amount of input lines is going to matter as well. Um, so yeah, so let's, uh, I mean, like I'll run it one more time and show this and let's take one of these, uh, inputs. So maybe we'll take like this plus plus equals equals, and let's run through exactly how it works with like a little drawing, uh, example, just so you guys get an idea. Okay. So I actually decided I'm just going to do a shorter input that I'll write up here. Um, just to make this example a lot easier. We'll do like that. Okay. So this is going to be our input. Pretend this came in as a string. We've read it in and we're going to do the solution now on this input. So essentially what we need to do is, well, we're going to follow the steps from our program. We're going to follow that, that for loop that we were doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this character and we're going to say last, okay, is equal to, and in this case, it's going to be a plus sign, right? I know that kind of looks like an X, but you, you get my point. Okay. Um, so we'll say that, all right? So we're saying last is equal to X and we say count. So we'll just say it's count is C in here. Okay. Make it better. Say C equals one. So the last character is X. Or, or plus even I'm reading it correctly and C equals one. So what we'll do now that that's what we've set up. We haven't even started looping yet. So now we're going to loop through this part of the string. Okay. There's a plus equals equals slash. We're not going to look at this first element because well, we already looked at it here and we already counted it. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the next element, which in this case is like the first index or another plus sign. So what we do is we say, okay, so what is this? Is it equal to last? Yes, it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to change last. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add one to count. So count is two and last is still plus sign because the last character is there. So now what we've done is we've essentially, let me change colors here to maybe make it a little nicer. We've already looked at this and we've already looked at this. And now we have last is plus and count is two. So what we do now is we look at this equal sign. We say, well, is equal sign equal to last? No, it's not. So what's the procedure there? Well, the procedure there is to add to our new string, which we'll just say is here. Okay, this is like our new output string. So we'll say output, okay, is, is that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add to it the last character or the count and then the last character. So we're gonna say out, output string. So this, right, is gonna be equal to plus two plus a space, which is that, plus the plus sign. So now our output string, if I erase all of this madness here, uh, is going to be changed. And I'm just going to write it up here and continue to write it if I can erase all this. So now our output string is going to look like two space plus, and this is currently our output string. Okay, so let's keep going. So what we do after this is we have to change last and we have to change count. So we're going to say last, okay, you're no longer plus sign. You are equal sign because that's our last character, right? And count, well, what are you equal to? You're equal to one because we just found this and we've counted it one time. Okay, so let's repeat the procedure. So we've, we've already looked at that. We looked at these first three. Now it's time to look at this equal sign. All right, so let's look at this equal sign. Is it equal to last? Well, yes, it is. So what's our procedure? Just add one to count. That's all we have to do. So now count's equal to two. All right, we've looked at this one now. Next element, let's look at the slash. Is slash equal to last? No, it's not. So what do we do? Well, we got follow the procedure. So we're gonna add to our output string. We're gonna say, well, the count was two and our last element was equal sign. So we're gonna add this essentially um, to this. So our new output string is gonna look like two plus two equal sign. Okay, this is our new output string. I just put it in a squirrely, squiggly thing so you can see it. All right, so now uh, we've looked at slash, right? And we've looked at all these. So we're actually out of the loop. But look, our e um, let me just clear this and I'll rewrite it so it's easier. Two plus two equal sign. Remember in our input was plus plus equal equal slash. But where's our slash? We don't have slash, but how many slashes are there? There's one slash. So that's why, and if I exit out of this quickly, we have this line here so that we account for the last um, character in our string. Because if we don't have that line, then we end up with, well, the input that you guys are seeing right now, or the output that you guys are seeing right now, just this. So we add that last line, which means we're gonna get the current count, which is gonna be equal to one. We're gonna get last, which will be equal to slash, because we set it there, right? And we're gonna say one and slash. And that would be our output, and that's how we solve the problem. So that essentially is this problem. Um, I believe the name of it actually was, let's see here, cold compress. Pretty decent problem. Um, I'd say, yeah, medium, intermediate level, nothing too crazy. Obviously, there's a lot more difficult problems. Let me know what you guys thought of this in terms of a difficulty level. And if you want to see something much more difficult than this in the future. Um, and yeah, with that being said, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. You like the video and I will see you again in another one.